What is up, guys? It's Jaron Gaming here, and today I'm going to be reacting to scary animations. So, so I'm starting this new thing called Terrifying Sundays. Oh, scary! And it's October as well. It's time to get scary. <laughs> and let me just take off my glasses because because of the thing you won't like see me like properly and. It's hard to explain, but yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, let's do this. Oh yeah, so the first one we are going to be reacting to is this one. A Christmas Eve Horror Story Animated. Yes, very scary. Alright, let's just do this. Three, two, one, go. Come on. Last year on Christmas Eve, I was working late. I'm 23. I work in New York City and commute home every day on the train. Since I'm one of the Sorry. younger ones in the office, I got stuck with one of the worst shifts, so I wasn't able to get home until 5 o'clock. My family had to a whole hour earlier to go to my cousin's house, so I had to drive alone. After having a quick snack before the half-hour drive, I got back to my car and put my cousin's address into my phone. Halfway through the drive, it started snowing. I got to my cousin's house around 6 o'clock. It was snowing heavily by this point, and I just made it in time to catch everyone starting dinner. I brought all of my gifts inside and cheerfully said hey to everyone. Okay. I stayed until around 11 o'clock. The rest of my family left a little sooner. I stayed an extra half hour or so just to hang out before leaving myself. By the time I was leaving, the ground had accumulated at least two feet of snow, and it wasn't even done snowing. The drive home was nightmarish. Mm. The roads were hardly even plowed, and I had to drive under 20 miles per hour on most roads. The roads were completely dead at this it's point, though. Slow. Most likely because everyone was smart enough to go home before the snow accumulated. Eventually, I turned onto a main road that I'm sure would usually be bustling, but at 11.15 on Christmas Eve night, there wasn't a single car or a single light from the store. It was a ghost town. But then, I did notice the flashing taillights of one car. It was parked on the side of the road and the smoke seeping out from its exhaust with the taillights giving it a red tint. As I got closer, I realized there was somebody next to the car waving their hand in the air. I assumed something was wrong and they needed help. So, me being the good Samaritan I am, I pulled up behind the car. When I opened my door, the guy approached me immediately, barely even giving me time to step out. He was an average-sized man, probably 5'10", 180 pounds. I spoke in a very demanding voice, Must asking me if fun, I know anything about fixing an engine. I told him I didn't know much about cars. The guy responded very quickly to everything I said. He told me it's fine. He went inside of his car for a second, popped open his trunk, came back out and told me to just wait by the trunk for a second. I had no idea what he wanted me to do. I was really confused. He walked over to the front of his car, and I heard him open the hood. I couldn't see anything he was doing since the trunk was blocking my view, and the loud wind of the snowstorm overpowered any small noises he might have been making. I put my hand on the back of the car and leaned my body in anticipation, when suddenly I heard three or four quick and aggressive footsteps in the snow behind me before I was pushed into the trunk. The man tried to close the trunk on me, but oh I kicked my, my feet up in resistance and held it up. I was able to overpower him and kick the trunk open completely. As I took advantage of the few seconds I had to get out of the trunk, I took out my keys. He tried to grab me now, and I dug my house key right into his neck. He fell to his knees, and his scream echoed down the deserted street. I was in my car and halfway down the road before he could even get up from his knees. Ow! A little further down... Really, that's got a hurt. Right, right. I one one and reported the guy. I came back in 10 minutes to find blue and red lights illuminating the windows of the deserted stores. Oh, that's just, that's the just police crazy. held him until the ambulance arrived for him. I watched the whole thing, and nothing ever felt better in my life. 
I got home safely half an hour later and told my family everything. I was still very shaken that Christmas, and this remains possibly the most horrific thing I've ever experienced. Yes, yeah, very horrific. Goodness me. Okay, so the one I'm going to be reacting to now is, um, shrink that a little bit, is Scary True Pool Horror Stories Animated. So, yeah, let's do this. Johnny, Johnny! Yes, Papa! Eating chocolate! No, Papa! I'm, I'm just going to pretend I never saw that. It was approaching the end of summer, and my friends and I wanted to do some cool, mischievous things before going back to school. So, we had the genius idea one night to sneak into a nearby community pool. It was actually only a couple blocks away. It's right smack in the middle of a residential area. So instead of sitting on a main road or something, it actually just sat around a bunch of houses on a quiet road. During the hot day, the little parking lot would be full and the spot would be bustling. But at one in the morning, the place was of course dead. You must have fired one then. There's obviously a big fence Sorry, surrounding the whole front entrance, as well as a cage that gets closed up when the place closes. So our best way was to get in through the side. We snuck into the backyard of a neighboring house and hopped the fence over to the pool it was as easy as that the four of us took off our shirts and jumped into the pool which in retrospect wasn't smart since any of the neighbors could have heard the splashes and just called the police but we were dumb high schoolers it was very very dark within that hole and closing this pool had no lights which is why it closed at sunset james courtney and Alyssa were on the other side of the pool as i was just kind of doing my own thing at first swimming around and getting my face wet. I saw Alyssa get out of the pool shortly after and run away. I swam over to see what was going on. She was just going to the water fountain, though. The three of us just bopped around in the water for a bit, and eventually we heard Alyssa jump back into the pool from the other side. It was too dark to see much more than her black hair covering her face. But just then, we heard Alyssa playfully call something to us as she was walking back to the pool. The three of us in the pool looked at each other. I know they were doing the same thing as me, counting heads. There were three of us on this side of the pool, and here came Alyssa walking over to our side. So who was that on the other side? Ooh. Alyssa got in, but the three of us were distracted, looking at the head bopping around the water across the pool. Oh, I know. James said across the pool... Who is that? Not even two seconds later, the head went underwater and disappeared from view. We took this time to whisper to each other, mostly yeah. things like, what should we do? What if that's security? Get out of the water, and run. should we run? Suddenly I felt something grab my leg with force and tried pulling me down into the water. I kicked, splashed, and yelled for help. James oh, came over gosh. to pull me out of the pool while the girls were already running for it, screaming. It wasn't until I got to the stairs of the pool that the grip on my leg was released and I was free. We hopped the same fence we climbed over to get in and ran all the way back to Alyssa's house. There are Oops. a few pot were already running for it, screaming. It wasn't until I got to the stairs of the pool that the grip on my leg... Security Sorry, guys, that's so That is, until they literally tried to pull me under the water. You don't know what to think. There are a few possibilities. Maybe it was just another kid messing with us. Maybe it was a security guard who went way too far. Or most likely, it was a dangerous person who had ill intent. Probably someone who's like drunk or something. Whoa, that is creepy. Okay, so the last one I'm going to be reacting to is Scary Vacation Stories 2 Animated. So yeah, let's do this. Uh, Halloween. I was vacationing in the Bahamas when I was 14 with some family friends. My friend and I were getting some henna tattoos at the hotel, and there was this guy lingering around us. 
but we didn't think much of it because a lot of people would stop to see what was going on. After mine was done, I told my friend and her mom I was going to go back to the room to get ready for dinner. There were two ways to the other side of the hotel, either inside through a bunch of small stores or outside along the pool. I walked through the inside and got to the elevator, where I saw the guy who had been watching us already at the elevator. We got on together, and he gestured for me to choose my floor button first. I clicked it, but he didn't choose another floor. Alarms start going off in my head. But what could I do? I was stuck in an elevator. The elevator stopped on my floor and I started walking to my room. In this hotel, most of the rooms faced the ocean, so to the right in this hallway were just windows. I was in the very last room on that floor, and I could see the guy following me about 10 feet behind. About two doors from my room, he ran up and grabbed me. I kicked and screamed, and he dropped onto the floor. I ran to the room and locked myself in. After talking with security and giving a description, they found the guy and found out that he had actually been following multiple younger women in the building. Which is creepy. That is creepy. Call the police. He should call the police. Hmm, crazy. Alright, so the person who created these animations is called Llama Arts. So yeah, look, subscribe to him and stuff. He's a cool YouTuber. Subscribe. Mm, yeah, and also if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, turn the bell on, leave a like, all of that stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.